to actually see. So unfortunately, those come first and uh, fooling around on Instagram comes second. So, um, oh, what's up, YouTube? And so I have Instagram here, YouTube here. Just so you guys know, if I look back and forth, that's, that's what's going on. So um, let me, the chat is not working again. Oh, it drives me so crazy. That doesn't work. Why does that not happen? Why does that happen? So Noah Daniels, thank you that you love my live, live streams. So in this one, this um, live, I wanted to do a couple things, which is answer everybody's questions. It's I love doing. I have a really good time doing that. Um, promote the shit out of my new course uh, because it's new. And then uh, give some shit away. What do you guys think about that? It is the Dr. Podcast, right? Anyway, so, okay, and, um, let's just go with some questions. Okay, first first I want to tell you guys, if you have not seen, I have, I, I, I am launching a study course. It, um, it, t it tells you how to, it helps you, this is what I did for myself, is it helps you concentrate, stay motivated, and work on <clears throat> basically some um, – study tactics and techniques that have been proven to Im improve your studying efficiency and also improve your brain power, like actually make you smarter. So those, those are the th types of things I put into the course. I also, it, so it's basically nine videos you get. Um, you also get uh, access to about 15 physicians and students who are connected um, uh, obviously in in medicine and that way everybody sort of helps each other through the process of either getting into med school getting into residency getting a job um, if that's what you're looking to do all that stuff so um, that's the course it's it's 97 bucks for right now until May 1st then it's 297 per year so the 97 is like uh, full like uh, lifetime access okay so now that I got that shit out of the way, let's answer some questions. Swedish med student here wondering why dermatology is so competitive in the US. It's not popular here. I'll tell you why. Because dermatology, you work four days a week and you make more money than most other doctors. That's the that's the whole thing. And it's like a beauty thing too. Like if you um, if you look at the like real big companies that are billionaire or billion billion dollar companies, they're like Skincare companies, they're L'Oreal is like one of the biggest in the United States. All fashion, all that stuff. Americans give a shit. All, all, the only thing that Americans give a shit about is not really their health, but their appearance. So that's what that's why it's so competitive. And the fact that you make a lot of money and you don't work very much. So Americans are lazy, and maybe Swedish, you know, the Swedes are not. So that's that's my take on that. Dermatology has its place, but for most of it, it, it's a lot of just like skincare making people look pretty, which is, I'm not going to say any more about that. Anyway, um, when, you, when you're depressed and your teacher highlights that a student's better than you, um, that's a bummer. I don't know. Uh, you got you to gotta just overcome that stuff. I think it's a lot of mine mind games with yourself right you have to um just you have to get out of that rut of depression and uh feeling like crap that's actually one of the things i teach in my course is uh how how your brain works how you um form new brain pathways neuro uh plasticity is what it's called um you recommend all my co your course my course to all your friends thank you nick i appreciate that uh, what was my favorite subject in medical school? I think anatomy and physiology was the best uh, in my my uh, opinion. Got accepted to a school this Sunday. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> four years of work while finally paying off. Good job. Why are under uh, general surgeons underpaid for their work? It doesn't make any sense. That's a good question. Uh, there's a lot of, I think, you know, well, there's a lot of people in general underpaid, like uh, teachers do a really important job, but they are underpaid. Um, uh, they're the general surgeons. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I think, you know, general surgeons used to make really good amount of money, uh, but they don't anymore. And it has to do with the reimbursement from basically the government, Medicare, because because all the insurance companies peg their reimbursement to essentially the uh, the government reimbursement. So if the government decides like this append appendicitis or appendectomy is worth, you know, it used to be worth like five thousand dollars now now the government pays you like 350 dollars for real like that's which is crazy because you actually save people a lot of times with that but so if they just decide like i don't i don't know if it's like a, a group of politicians or you know um you know lawmakers or whatever it is they're talking about reimbursement and then, and then they just decide to bring it down so um there is there is something actually that happened to united healthcare united healthcare actually um uh, has depressed the the re reimbursement prices because they're the biggest healthcare company, um, and they started telling everybody there's this thing called usual and customary um, reimbursement. And if I if I bill United Healthcare and I go like, yeah, this is six grand, they're, they'll come back and say, well, what other general surgeons pay or get paid for this is like, um, is they say they like say two thousand. And so that's the usual and customary price. And so that's what we're going to pay you. But since they're the biggest company, they, they actually in 2000, the 2005, 2006, they were sued because somebody figured out that they were artificially suppressing. They were lying when they, they were going back to general surgeons and lying to them about the usual and customary. And so that has actually depressed the prices. And then they got sued. They paid out $225 million dollars. And then everybody forgot about it, and United Healthcare kept doing whatever they wanted to do. So this is like some of the weird shit in healthcare, and I talk about some of the stuff that's really bad in that um, uh, about like um, you know insurance companies and how really all this stuff should be not. It's a business to business transaction, but it's going through the customer. Which you know, so if you're the military and you're charging, uh, you you're charging like whatever, $500 for a hammer, nobody cares because you're, you're a contractor and you're charging the government 500 bucks. But if you were to charge a normal person $500 for a hammer, they'd be like, what the fuck? Well, that's what's happening with healthcare. And you know, one, one business, which is the hospital, is charging another business a large amount of money, right? Hospital goes like, no, this, this surgery is a $12,000. The insurance company goes, uh, fuck that, we're not paying 12,000. And the hospital goes, Okay, well, well, how about ten? And then the insurance company's like, no, how about eight? And they're like, okay, how about nine? And they settle on nine. But as a as a consumer, if you see that, you're like, what the fuck? Twelve thousand dollars? That's that's crazy. That's ridiculous. Why should I pay that? But it's it it's not for the customer, the consumer, which is which is just you know, there's a lot of problems with U.S. healthcare, and that's just like one of them. Anyway, that's on a, on a tangent. Now I haven't answered anything. Why is CT surgery so unpopular? CT surgery is un unpopular because right now the cardiologists are doing a lot of a lot more interventions, and so it used to be the cardiothoracic surgeons operated on everybody that had a heart attack or has had plaque or that was going to have a heart attack. But now, since the cardiologists have taken a large chunk of that, what's left is the the really difficult cases. And so, if somebody has four or five stents, and then now they need surgery, now that guy's like way along, right? he's he's more debilitated it's harder to operate it's harder to get a good outcome from him uh it, you know if if he didn't have any stents and you take it 10 years prior now he's you know instead of operating on a, a 7, 65 year old guy you're operating on a 75 year old guy or 85 year old guy so ct surgery is has the the numbers have gone down of what what you operate on and what you do operate on is actually more difficult cases so that's why uh, the Karen cycle is basically, oh, that's probably Krebs, huh? Basically, a sequence of reaction that cells take it, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. You're probably answering something. Else. Mopping a barf is the worst. Yes, that's right. Krebs cycle, yeah. Sciences versus art degree for pre med. That depends on what you like. Um, if you do an art degree, you're probably going to have to do a couple extra classes. But if you like art, I would do that. Do I look working in a hospital environment? Yeah, most of the time I do. It's it's you know it depends. It all depends on the people really. But um, yeah. Sorry, I gotta text my brother-in-law back real quick.
Um, uh, some of these, blah, 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 yeah. What do you think about Medicare and Medicaid and about why healthcare is so expensive? Um, all right, uh, well, I'll, I'll take a stab at this. Here, here's the thing, this is not my idea either. Uh, one of my surgery mentors uh, uh, brought this point up. He goes, uh, he goes, uh, um, you know, healthcare is expensive, um, and uh, a lot of people want uh, universal healthcare, so the government pays for it. Which is, which is kind of like, say, the police department or the police force or the fire department, right? We all pay taxes. That stuff goes into the fire department. If you have a fire in your house, the fire. The firemen show up if you know you have a problem. Uh, the the policemen show up or whatever, uh, and they take care of it. And and that's kind of like universal. It's like everybody gets taken care of, right? So why don't we do healthcare like that? Well, the the only issue with doing that with with healthcare is that the fire department there are like there are rules, right? You can't you can't uh, burn your house down or burn your neighbor's house down. And then call the fire department and be like, hey, guess what? Like, hey, I just burned my house down for fun. Or, you know, I just burned my neighbor's house down for fun. And they show up and like, okay, yeah, don't worry about it. No problem. We got it. So we'll take care of it. Right? You can't, you can't do that. So if, if you're going to do universal health care, it might be a good idea to have some rules. Like, hey, you can't eat uh, 12 Twinkies in a day. And you can't keep your blood sugar over, you know, 300 um, all the time. Like, there's got to be some rules. If you want free care, then you got to take care of yourself. Like you got to take care of your house. You got to take care. You got to follow the rules when it comes to, you know, laws. So why don't you have to follow rules when it comes to your health if you're going to get free health care? So I think that's a great, I think that's a great idea. I, I think that if you don't follow those rules and you, uh, you know, destroy your health and by the way, 85, I would say around 85% of healthcare um, health problems are due to our lifestyles and you know I don't blame anybody for it I don't like if you want to eat Twinkies eat fucking Twinkies if you want to smoke smoke if you want to drink you know a two-fifths of vodka a day do that I don't give a shit but I, I don't think that your neighbor should be paying for those kind of for the, the repercussions on when that when it goes down because it will so anyway, um, there's a lot of there's a lot to healthcare. There's it's not one simple. That's not the answer. The problem is that people think that there's one simple answer, and the one simple answer is just to make it universal healthcare. Uh, but I don't think it's that simple. Uh, it's it's not like other countries. We're not other countries. We we have we have 400 million people in our country, and you know most of these other countries have like you know a couple of million that they're taking care of. I mean, uh, uh, even Canada's 30 million. That's like not even close. Like it's just it's just a diff. We're on a different. Uh, we're in a different ball game. Uh, test. What are the main problems in current U.S. healthcare? Um, um, there's a lot. Uh, what type of stethoscope would you recommend to a med student? That's a good. That's a good question. Bing. So this is pretty cool. Uh, this is a pretty sweet stethoscope right here. This, these got Metalita actually is donating these stethoscopes, uh, and we're gonna give away. How many you guys want? How many should I give away? What do you think? Two, three, twelve. Um, so this is this is a nice one. Uh, and I do recommend this one. This is super cool. Can you guys see that? It's not really in, is it in focus? Can't see. It is back. There's, oh, that's, that's. And you guys can get these on metalita.com. And I'll put the link in the uh, below. But at the end, 100. You would kill for one of these. Don't kill. These are only like a hundred bucks. So these are about. I think there's about a hundred bucks. They got a couple more on their website that are like super nice. Um, I had one very similar to this when I was. Uh, uh, I got when I was a med student, and I still have it. So that's what I recommend. So I'm going to give those away at the end of the uh, broadcast here. Or is it a broadcast? I don't know. It's live. 
So I'm going to give those away at the end, so you guys stick around for that. And the people who I'm going to give it away to are the ones that have purchased the course. So if you go right now to secretstudyhacks.com and you get the course, the people who have bought the course uh, at the end of the broadcast, like everybody, is going to be entered into the um, entered into the uh, drawing. So I will put the I uh, just put that thing there. Um, any advice for a single mom trying to get into med school? I am not a single mom, so I, you know, I don't. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the issues are. However. We will have some single moms in the course that can help you as well. Um, that's not me promoting the course or anything. Anyway. Yeah, it is. I'm just, just kidding. Uh, would you say your MCAT score is more important than your GPA during the application for med school? I think they're equally important. Um, it's tough to say which one is more important. I do think that if you have a marginal uh, GPA and you, and you have a stellar MCAT score, that will make up for it. If you have a marginal MCAT score and a stellar GPA, it's not, the, I feel like that's not the same. I, I feel like the MCAT is more important, is more weight than the GPA. But they're close, does that make sense? Uh, I'm looking at YouTube right now. Majoring in biology or chemistry in the basic four years called. Uh, I do recommend that because that's kind of like the easiest route, right? If you, um, if, if you, major in bio or chemistry, then you're already taking those classes, you're already taking the prereqs, you don't have to take anything extra. If you if you major in like art, then you're probably gonna have to take a bunch of extra classes to get the prereqs done. Um, I have not read Being Mortal yet. Cheap, cheapest stethoscope you can get in the city. Dating advice as a doctor, do you ever date any nurses? Yeah. Uh, I have dated nurses and you know, it's difficult. Like it's a, it's a double edged sword because like as a res, especially as a resident, like you don't go anywhere else. There's, you're not going to fucking meet anybody. So like, how are you supposed to date? So then you end up spending a lot of time with these nurses and some of them are really awesome. So you can start dating. And then like, if you break up or have a problem, then it's a disaster because then you got to see them all the time. So it's the deal, like don't shit where you eat kind of thing, but it's pretty tough to, to like not do that. I mean, we just we just naturally, you know, uh, uh, start like seeing usually seeing um, people that were around a lot, and that's I mean, it's 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 stupid because a lot of administrators will be like, oh no, you, you know, you can't be you know dating coworkers and stuff. It's like, how, really? Come on, like, like that's how you get to know somebody if you see them a lot. How can doctors improve patient education? I think that it's really a good time right now because we have so much access to, uh, to obviously the internet and there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of cool um, applications out there. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. I also forgot, I have some other things to give away. So if you guys go check out biodigital.com, um, I have subscriptions. I have 10 subscriptions. I'm not going to give 10 away today. I'm going to give two subscriptions away to BioDigital. And BioDigital is a, is a uh, uh, oh, crap. I forgot. I was going to bring something. But BioDigital is a um, basically a digital cadaver. That's what it is. It's a digital cadaver that when uh, you, you can totally dissect everything. It's amazing. If you go check out their website, um, obviously don't leave my live webcast here to do that, but go check it out after. And I'll give two subscriptions or yearly subscriptions. And those guys are really awesome. They actually contacted me not too long ago, long ago because they want to help me um, or they want to partner with me to uh, help kids in, in third world countries uh, with medical education. And that's one of the, one of the things I want to do. One of my goals is to uh, develop, you know, some med medical education that's free for kids in third world countries, and so that the U U.S. can can teach those uh, kids that don't have access to good medical education. And they're like, dude, we love that message. We want to we want to let's partner and do that. So I talked to the uh, uh, chief medical officer 
who uh, is really awesome. He used to be the he used to be the producer on the Dr. Oz show, so he's a really interesting dude. He was a he's a, a doctor as well, and uh, yeah, he gave me he gave me a bunch of subscriptions, so I'm going to give two of those away as well. So, um, been getting a light headache in the right side of my brain. Blah blah. blah. Is this normal? Whenever you try to study, oh, it's stress, probably. Okay, I can't really diagnose anything over the internet, and I'm not supposed to do that, and I'll probably get in deep shit if somebody actually says, sees that I do that. But uh, I wouldn't doubt if it's just when you study, it's probably stress. But you should see a doctor, please see a doctor, okay? Do I ever, ever do, would I ever do plastic surgery? So we do, I, I have done a lot of plastic surgery in residency, and it was okay. Um, I wasn't super excited to do plastics. Um, I was actually going to go into plastics. I thought when I was in med school, that's what I wanted to do. And then it ended up like, I thought general surgery and emergency stuff was so much more fun because I felt like I was the, uh, I was like Superman, like swooping in and saving the day and stuff. And I thought that was much more kind of my style. Um, I was going to read some, hold on. Find a girlfriend on social media, just slide into the DMs. Uh, why didn't I accept the neurosurgery position? That's a great question. That is because uh, by that time, I had not really, I didn't have experience in, in, in neurosurgery. I didn't have enough experience to say, I want to do this for my life. Like, I didn't do any rotations in, in undergraduate. Uh, I mean, in, in, in uh, med school. And so for me to like switch to neurosurgery, that would be my first kind of experience in neurosurgery and exposure. And I thought that was just a dumb idea because well, what if I didn't like it? You know, what if I was like, God, this sucks. And you can't just do that because the money's good because you just, you'll be fucking miserable. Although I'm usually like, I like, I do like a lot of medicine and I really enjoy kind of the brain stuff, but I, I just, you know, that was a big leap to, to do that. Plus, it was like <laughs> an extra three years. Uh, and I was old. Um, am I making the right choice to go to a med school instead of a number 20, number 30 med school in order to stay in California with friends and family? I'm assuming you said something else before that. Uh, here's a good question. Uh, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that question was. Uh, how much does insurance cost, uh, or how much does cost and insurance affect my everyday decisions for making treatment options? So most um, most of the time, it does not affect my decision making. But I try to get a sense for patients if they have insurance or not, and if they don't, then I try to to definitely give them options. And some um, some people don't want to do certain therapies and, and things like that. I mean, if it's appendicitis, it's appendicitis. If it's, it's an acute condition that needs surgery, the patient's going to be like totally hosed if they don't get it. I don't, I don't fuck around. Like, I'm like, look, you have to have appendix, you have to have your appendix out. It's not really an option kind of thing. But, you know, um, a lot of the hospitals have uh, charity care. Actually, one of my hospitals, I just went to a meeting the other day. One of my hospitals gave $113 million of charity care away last year. $113 million. It's only a 300 bed hospital. Like just, just think about that. What's your opinion on gap years after undergrad before med school? Um, I did that. Um, so it was good for me. I, I needed to study for the MCAT and stuff. I don't think it's bad, but you do have to take it. Like if I think you, you do need to, um, you do need to think about, the cost of it at the end. Um, and where are you at? Like, do you need a break to where you're like, I want to go do these things. Like I want to travel Europe. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to see some shit before I go into med school. Cause once you go to med school, it's like trains left. You better, you, once you get on that train, it ain't stopping, you know? So it's really hard to stop and, and take breaks once you're in med school, like you're full throttle and it just keeps going. It just like keeps getting more and more. In a wound care clinic currently for my elective and 
my elective and insurance plays a huge role. I don't know the whole, oh, for your elective. Yeah, wound care clinic is a definitely a different deal. Like that's, you know, so when you have time to, to take care of people, then obviously you, you're going to, at, you know, make sure they have insurance and stuff. But when they're like, most of the stuff I deal with is an emergency in, you know, or urgent condition. And you can't just be like, oh yeah, just we're just not, not going to do it. And then you can go home and fucking get sepsis. No, I don't do that. Um, but if, if I did elective surgery, then it's completely different. Right. And, you know, obviously when you, when patients go home, and if they don't have insurance, I'm not going to prescribe them like a, va a wound vac or a bunch of expensive medications. Like, so I guess, yeah, it does. But in the elective, I mean, in the uh, emergency stuff, it doesn't. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I, cheesy muffin, I have not seen your question. I don't know. So, dude, again, I was looking at YouTube, which I probably maybe should not do both. So at the end, let's see, what time did I start this? 04. Uh, everybody always asks me if I like Grey's Anatomy, and it's okay. Like, um, I, I, don't, I don't really watch it much anymore. That's a good question. What's the biggest change in surgery I expect to see in the next 10 years with respect to technology in the OR? Um, it's just really just difficult to say because... 10 years ago, I expected us to have um, more automated systems and we have the same, same scope. Um, I actually was working on a, a wireless laparoscope for a while, and I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. Um, I would really like to see kind of laparoscopic surgery um, evolve because the scopes we use right now are like literally built and thought of and made in like the 50s and 60s and we're still using them it's crazy possibilities of getting a neurosurgical residency is an img so it's possible it's very difficult but it's possible if you crush the steps if you uh, do really well if you go to one of the major uh caribbean stu uh, schools st george ross uh, auc uh one of those they're very respected and then you get uh you basically get a 99 percentile on your steps, then it's definitely possible. Any advice to a future scrub nurse? Um, I don't know. I, I think just, uh, you know, you got to pay attention to, uh, to every everybody. Study hacks. Syst sorry. Does it focus on systems? What do you mean systems? Do you, are you talking about like, patient like cardi cardiac system like cardiovascular system and stuff like that i don't I, so the to be clear the study hack system is not anything to do anything medical it's purely like how to study better so if you're in a, if you're like in law school or something you could you can apply it. i just this is my perspective from medicine so i i kept it kind of medical oriented let's put it that way i mean i I put the, the page looking medical because I'm a doctor, but it's really not anything to do with medicine. Does that make sense? Why do anesthesiologists make so much more than other doctors? Um, anesthesiologists are, I think, very, it, you know, when you put people to sleep every day, it's a high risk um, position. And I think they get compensated partially based on their risk. And, but they also are, most of them are very knowledgeable. It's a four, I, mean, I believe four years. They have great like clinical sense and they're very good, like critically, we're critically Ill, Ill patients. So I think those things. Uh, MCAT in two days, best take, test taking tips and advice. So at this point I would say, you got to trust your gut. Try not to go back too many times um, and, and read. Like when you read the question, obviously make sure that you're answering the question, the question that they're asking. And then also once you answer the question, if you decide to change the answer, be 100% sure that you're changing it for a good reason. Because um, 
because most of the time your your first instinct is correct. Um, Sandra, I'm a little confused about your program. So for two hundred dollars a month, you will Skype with us, whatever, and help us with anything pertaining to academics. Correct. So you get four uh, each week. You get four Skypes a month. So that's a lot, which I'm not even sure I'll be able to keep that up. But for now, that's what it is. Um, and anybody that comes in right now will be will be getting that. And then any yeah anything you want to talk about. Advice for surgical tech student um, starting your clinicals in August. Uh, I would just like maybe listen for a, a few months when you're in the OR first. Um, some techs like to come in and especially students like ask lots of questions and all this shit. And sometimes you're in the mood to do that and sometimes you're not. Um, if, it, if it's a case that's not very, it's very routine and like you're in a teaching mood, then you're going to be like, yeah, okay, let me, let's do this, blah, blah, blah. But the other day I did one like in the middle of the night and the, the tech, like, cause she was a student, she was super, she's super nice, but she was like asking this and that. And I, and I was like kind of frustrated with the case and I was a little bit just, eh, wasn't really into teaching at that time. So just, I guess, pay attention to like what the surgeon's doing, how, how kind of stressful the situation is and how much he feels like teaching, he or she feels like teaching at that time. Oh, I'm missing all this stuff, sorry. Um, how does a trauma surgeon differ from a general surgeon? Um, so I have a video on this actually, Nick, you should check that out. Cause that's like, a, actually it's a 10 minute conversation um giveaways that somebody say yeah for free yeah exactly i have a stethoscope to give away i have three of these and two should we do two two and two three and three how about that three stethoscopes and three bio digital um uh subscriptions is cuba a good place to study medicine i don't know i would guess no but i've, I've never i've never been to cuba but i've or it's not a great, I mean, you know, there's like the infrastructure, the government, all that stuff is a problem. Advice for high school wannabes. What does that mean? Like, oh, you're in high school, but you want to be a doctor. Um, high school, you're in the best position because right now you can get your studying down. You can do really well. You can get into a career as well. You can get into a really good college, which will help you get into a really good uh, uh, residency. And so that's the easiest way. Um, uh, sorry, one a really good college will help you get into a really good U.S. med school and make your life really fucking easy compared to mine. How do you win the stethoscope? So anybody who's bought the secret study hacks.com's course by the time i end end this uh call will i mean in this um live thing will um uh be entered to win and i'm going to do a random drawing in the paramedic program but plan on going to med school after how are the classes do we self-learn or learn in lectures and classes and study home all of the above, you do everything. You learn in class, you go home, you learn stuff, or you learn stuff before, you read before, you go to class, you get it a second time, then you go home and study again. Do I think that some specialties will not be as popular in the next 10 years? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure about that, honestly. It's hard to predict. It is open to those who bought it earlier than a week. In the in the week, yes, it is. Do I ever have students observe me in surgery? Can I do this? Yes, you can. Uh, there's some qualifications for that. If you email me, Dr. Buck Parker at Gmail, then I'll let you know what it is. Do I have any active research? No, but I think we're probably going to start doing it pretty soon here.
nursing school, want to go to med school, do you think a post-bac program is beneficial? Here's what I think about the post-bac thing. If you are, if you applied to med school and you got some interviews and didn't get in, then the post-bac is probably uh, a, a good thing to do or a master's if you're close. If you're, if you applied to med school and you didn't get any interviews, that means you're not even close to getting in, then I would just go to a school outside the States and save your time and money. How often do I get to operate? It's, it's um, usually one, uh, it averages out to be every time I'm on call, which is like 14 days a month. Although I had one the other night and I wasn't on. What do I have to sacrifice to be in a position? Um, uh, basically a normal life. Uh, I never had, I've never had a normal life. I didn't uh, go to college, have a sweetheart, get married after college, get a job, have uh, buy a white picket fence, have children. I didn't do any of that. But I'm in a different position. You know, some stuff is good, some stuff is bad. So. Can I match in cardiac surgery with a 250 on step one? Yes, you're an IMG. I think, I think so. I, I think you can get a general surgery uh, program. And then cardiology, uh, cardiac surgery from general surgery is not that difficult to get. I have, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm not gonna expand on that, but. Uh, where did I go to med school? I went to med school in, in uh, at St. Matthews. And that was in Belize at the time. It's actually in Grand Cayman now. What's the free stuff? I'm giving away a stethoscope. This stethoscope right here from Metalita. Um, it's a, um, they donated these for you guys. And then also um, a BioDigital. BioDigital.com is a, is a digital cadaver, which you can dissect. It's really freaking awesome. Well, I have this promotion for... Of course, at a later time. No, this promo promotion right here is uh, only during this uh, live. Um, I do have more next week, but they're different. They're 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 not set scopes or um, I actually have some more bio digital uh, ones I can give away, but not any set scopes. Why does the heart appear on the opposite side when you do an echo? It doesn't. Echo is E C H O, by the way. But that's right. Uh, do you have any advice on shadowing physicians and, and surgeons on as a college student? No, you just have to go. You know, show your interest, contact somebody, be like, "Hey, I really want to be whatever they are." Here's 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 the real advice. Whatever they are, and you want to shadow them, tell them I want to be what you're doing. I, or I want, to, I want to be a surgeon. If they're a cardiac surgeon, be like, I want to be a cardiac surgeon. If they're, if they're a gastroenterologist, be like, I want to be a gastroenterologist. So kind of play to that. Even if you don't, um, I mean, well, if you don't, I don't know why you're shadowing them, but, you know. What, okay, Sandra, this is a good question. What if we don't see results in our academic performance from your program? Do we get a refund? Because Cause like your prices aren't cheap and you already make good money. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, yes, absolutely. I give everybody 30 days and it's, if you get it now, it's like, so you won't get the course until May 1st. Okay. Cause I'm still working on it. Um, they're still being edited and all that stuff, but um, I'll give you 30 days. If you don't like it, you go through the whole thing. Um, you, you use whatever you want. Uh, if you don't like it, then you uh, just email me and I give your money back. I don't like to be the person that's like, um, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to, uh, not provide you what I expect to. So if it, any question at all about it, like you it's not for you, then you just email me. It's like, no question. I'll give you back. I don't care. That's a good thing about being a surgeon is, is you're right. I do make good, good living. Um, this course that I put a lot of time and energy and effort into this course, it's cost me. Uh, I mean, if you really kind of talk about all the costs involved in building this, because I've gone through 
multiple iterations. I've built other courses that haven't worked uh, just because I didn't know what I was doing. So all of those things, I mean, it's cost me like a hundred grand to do this. So it's, it wasn't cheap. I mean, I know 90 bu a hundred bucks seems like I'm charging a lot, but it's like, if I can just get the stuff out there, get the info out there, recoup my costs on the thing, that would be awesome. And then we can go from there. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Do you have any tips on making small talk with older consultants while you're on a rotation? Yeah, just find out what they like and then talk about that. Ask them what they like, ask them what they do, um, ask them about themselves. Everybody, all, all doctors, almost all doctors like to talk about themselves. Look at me, I'm talking about myself for like the whole fucking hour here. But that's, um, that's what I would do. What hospitals are per currently at? Uh, if you're gonna do a rotation, then I'll tell you. What sets my service apart from others? Uh, my, mine is different. Uh, it, it, it focuses more on the psychology. Um, there's a big portion of, of psychology of success and product productivity. I think that's the most probably different. Um, <laughs> yeah, Queen Bee's agreeing right there that doctors like to talk about themselves. Uh, so why did you get into medicine? I got in simply because I could not see myself doing anything else and wanted a job with meaning. That's a great reason. I mean, I wanted a job. I wanted a job or a career with meaning. Um, I was really interested in um, organs and you know all that stuff and and how everything worked as as a high school student. So that's where I. That's where I got kind of started. Does my program uh, address how to deal with test anxiety? It actually does. Um, I, I haven't actually specifically talked about test anxiety, but there are a lot of things that we're anxious about. And there's a whole section about um, calm, like ba basically calming your brain. You know, a lot of people have ADHD or they think they have ADHD. Um, you know, if, if they haven't been diagnosed and I talk about a lot of techniques in there to how, how to, to calm that down because you, you really have to like master your brain and master your like neural pathways to be able to do this stuff. Can you rotate with me from SGU? Um, you, you, I, I'm working on that. You may be able to do that. Just email me, uh, Dr. Buck Parker, Dr. B C K P A R K E R at Gmail and discuss it. Please make a video on what high schoolers should do should do to go into medical school, please. Okay. Any books I recommend? Yes, I have tons of books I recommend. This book right here, Top Knife, is really cool. If you are a med student or you're going into surgery, you should definitely read this. It's pretty um, if you don't know anatomy or physiology, then it's like maybe a little bit difficult for you. But if you have taken anatomy and physiology, I think it's pretty cool. It's made for first year and second year residents, but uh, as surgery residents, but it's really pretty good. Do you ever pull I'm, the, I'm a doctor card on the ladies? All right, I'll give you one story. I did this one time. I, I've always been very reluctant to do this and because it just sounded like a douche move, right? And then one time, like, I wanted to, like, talk to this girl and she was not giving me the time of day. And I went over, I was like, hey, you know, like, it was like a bar or something. I was like, come buy a drink. She's like, nah, don't worry about it. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. And then she, like, came to the bar and was, you know, sitting, like, next to me. I was like, hey, you know, whatever. And then I was like, well – stupidly came out of my mouth like I'm a surgeon and she's like what the fuck do I care I was like yeah you're right I was a dumb fucking move and I've never done that since I hate it uh please make a video on what I oh, this. um is it better to go to a good school with lots of scholarships or a great school with no scholarships even though it'd be more expensive my opinion is go to a great school um 
it, the school you you go to will stay with you for the rest of your life. Uh, so a great school also, if, but, but that, you know, like the name is a lot. Well, the name's not a lot right now to you, but the name's a lot later. So if you're deciding between um, a state school and Harvard or a, like an Ivy League school, go to the Ivy League school. Um, if you're deciding between two state schools and one you're like, oh, this is really good, and this, the other one's much better, then I might say um, just go to the one that you have the scholarships in that, so you don't have uh, debt. How does adrenaline impact you when you're on, on the table, like OR table? Um, it does, um, you know, most of the time it doesn't unless you have a really crazy case. Uh, and um, I, I suppose it, it does, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it makes you better. But I, I don't know. It's not, it's really, you know, adrenaline is supposed to focus you into one, one kind of like tunnel vision thing. And so I'm not sure that, that it helps like make decisions. It really shouldn't make, help make decisions. It should you focus you on trying to get one thing done and that's like fight or flight. How did I stay motivated um, throughout all the studying? That is something I talk about in my course. I actually, there's three parts to it, the, the course. There's three videos or sections each part and that is an entire part. It is, it is I, have, I have three sections dedicated to motivation. What other features would be added to my service over time? Um, what I'm going to do is just basically go, um, take the feedback from people that take the course and then create more more videos based around that stuff. And then also, like I, I really like productivity and I like um, learning, you know, more shit. And so I read a lot. And then all the things that I read, I'm going to talk about and relate to medicine. So I'll continue. I'll cont continually add to the course um, all the time. The other thing that's going to be great is that I have other doctors that want to add to the course. So uh, I've already talked to a couple of them, and I think we're gonna, probably going to do like a step one, uh, court, like separate course inside that. Uh, we'll probably do an MCAT one. We'll probably do a step two. You know, things like that. So those will take time. Uh, they will not be right away. They may not even be within the next six months, but that's what the plans are. Um, I am not married. I don't have any kids. I would love, um, yeah, I do want those things. Uh, maxillofacial surgery is actually great. I think it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool, uh, specialty to go into. It's actually fun surgery too. Uh, I mean, I, I assist in some of them. I did a lot in residency where we were on plastics and got to do a lot of bad, um, uh, bad facial trauma and stuff. That's pretty cool. How long am I going to stream today? Well, it is almost 2 p.m. my time, so I think we'll end it in six minutes. Why don't you just tell us how to study for free, you money-hungry bastard, Maria Jones says. Well, Maria, if you ever do anything in your life that takes a lot of time and takes, takes you 20 years to do, then um, actually I have been telling you guys how to study for free, and I do all these free videos for you guys. So there you go, Maria. That's what I think about that. I think, I think my stuff is valuable. Here's the other thing. I think my – my course is really valuable. And I also think that if I give it for free, then you, you will take it and probably not even finish it because you'll think, oh, this is for free and you won't value the course. So that's another reason you have to charge for these things because the people that just get stuff for free, they just throw in the trash, never go through it. And then you, you don't even ch change your life. So I don't really like, it's stupid. So you can, I don't know, whatever. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna get upset, but I mean, you you don't you have a job? Why why do you do your job? Why don't you do your job for free? Same reason. 
No, nobody, like everybody should be, everybody should be compensated uh, for a fair amount of their value. And in fact, if, if I was really charging uh, what this course is worth, you should be, I, I should get, I should be charging about $5,000 for this. I mean, this, this is, I've spent years and hunt, like basically like a hundred grand uh, creating this. So, so if I should really, um, if, if it should be, you know, correct, it should, I should charge, you know, $5,000, but I don't it's fucking 97 bucks because basically everybody in the United States almost can afford 97 bucks. And by the way, I give um, the course away to people in a third world country, but people in first world countries like the United States were born, um, you know, they won the pre-birth lottery, you were born in the United States, and so you can fucking, you know, afford it. I know, I, okay, I'm done. Oh. Any surgeons with ADHD? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know any surgeons with ADHD. Um, Good way to find people that will let you shadow. You know, you're just gonna have to ask everybody, find people that you like, number one, that are good people in general, and they'll probably let you do it. How do I keep from getting frustrated with people who feel entitled to healthcare? Um, I, I am frustrated with it. Um, uh, it's really difficult because I think, um well he, he, it's very difficult because i do get frustrated with people who are entitled to it however i also have to step out of my shoes and say i don't know where this person is coming from and i don't know how they were i don't know what their life is like and how they came to this conclusion that they are entitled but um, and so th then I can't say like, I wouldn't be in the same position because I don't know what happened to them. Um, so it's, it's a pretty tough thing to do, but you have to like, that's a, this is a very high level of thinking. And in order to be like upset with somebody for that, and then at the same time say, okay, I, I don't know what they went through and how they got to this place. Then I think, I think that's, you know, what real what doctors should do because we should be compassionate to people even though i don't want to be compassionate to them and i get irritated on the inside i, I shouldn't do that on the outside so that's that's where i'm at um yeah people that are entitled in general you get you can get annoyed with as well what's the most overlooked Thing about orthopedics and where do I think about ortho overlooked thing about orthopedics I don't I don't think there's anything special about orthopedic surgery <laughs> uh, ortho is actually a very good specialty to go into they make a lot of money they do some you know they do some good surgery all that stuff but there's nothing overlooked about it there's nothing that is diff um, I guess there, I shouldn't say there's nothing difficult about it. that's that's totally incorrect. Uh, they, they you know all specialties have uh, very complex decisions to make um, because we're dealing with people. When applying for a job, should you sell yourself in a cover letter or be modest? Um, I don't know. I would sell myself. Why not, right? How many hours, work hours approximately is in a month as a general surgeon? I don't know what the month is, but um, I do seven, uh, basically like, I work around 21 days a month right now. Um, I was working 28 to 29 days a month for a while but I'm doing uh, about 21 days a month right now. Bassin for days. 
Shout out. What's up, dog? Any advice for applying to match as a Caribbean student? Um, well, uh, I, I think when you're applying, it comes down to your step scores, your school, and your GPA. So um, personally, I did my cover, my letter was, was like an exciting story at the beginning. And then uh, why I wanted, like how, how that related to why I wanted to be a, a doctor and then what I, what do I want to do and, you know, for my life. Um, so that was kind of where, and then also like kind of mixing in, Hey, I'm a hard worker. I'm reliable, all that stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm past like two minutes already. So, okay. Um, let me go look and see. So last time I, um, gave away the things like live, but I have to, I figured out that I have to go, um, and do like a random drawing because last time I only did, I took the people who bought during this live uh, video and I just picked out of those. But this one I'm gonna do everybody because I think that's probably more fair. Sorry about that last time. I, I'm doing that, I'm just making this shit up on the fly. So um, anyway, okay you guys, uh, thank you very much for watching once again. And we will do, I'm gonna do another one on Sunday. And Sunday um, is going to be uh, actually a really big, well, not a really big, but a bigger giveaway. I think you guys are going to love that. Uh, so don't miss that one. Um, it might possibly be an iPad. Um, possibly, probably, most likely. Okay, fine. I'm going to give away an iPad on Sunday. Okay, so uh, you guys show up on Sunday when i um do the live on it'll be instagram and youtube so thank you guys so much for watching i will email the people who won okay and if you um didn't win come on sunday <laughs> all right see you guys later